invited. Dear friend, now that I'm back home from the hospital and all put back together again, I just love to see you. Please, 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 won't you come to my special party this Saturday? I'm having a celebration. Love, Ellie. That's me. Hey, hey, you're invited to come too. Uh, excuse me, Big Mike? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't mean to complain, but can I get up and move around yet? I'm feeling a little squeezed down here. Well, you're looking pretty terrific under my microscope, Rory. I appreciate your holding still for so long. Tell you what, let me take just one more picture of you at high power. Got it. Okay, guy, you can get up now. <laughs> I don't mention it. Always happy to do it in the name of science and friendship. Well, I just want Ellie's homecoming celebration tonight to be a memorable occasion for her and all her friends. Ooh, it's gonna be a great party, Mike. Healthy food, decorations. Yeah. We almost lost her, you know. That was a very serious car accident she was in last month. She was injured pretty badly. If it weren't for the excellent medical care she received in the hospital... And the gifts of blood she received from volunteer donors... Ellie might not be here to celebrate with. No kidding. A lot of blood and a lot of people helping. Now, Rory, before the celebration begins, wouldn't you like to invite our new friends out there to join us? Huh? Oh, oh sure. <laughs> Hi! Now, Rory, I know you like talking a lot about yourself and all that you and your blood relatives do. But please try not to get too carried away, all right? Well, all right. Come on in, kids! Woohoo! Fantastic! Glad to see you kids have as much energy as I do. I brought along a ton of cards for her. And a bunch of well wishes, too. This is such an exciting story. I certainly think it is. It's a story about something you just can't live without. Your blood. My blood. Our blood. You can say that again. Our blood. Tyler, will you help me demonstrate? Sure thing, Rory. Now, even though usually you can't see your blood, it's not that hard to find. It's carried to every part of your body by thousands of blood vessels, arteries, veins, and capillaries. In fact, hang on to your wheels. Would you believe the human body has so many miles of blood vessels inside of it, they could encircle the Earth once, then twice, then a little bit more? It's true! By the time you're all grown up, you'll have a bit more than 10 pints of blood in your body. That's a lot. Think of your blood as the transportation system in your body that's always on the move, making deliveries and pickups day and night. Pumped by your heart, your blood circulates nonstop, carrying and dropping off nutrients like food and oxygen to wherever they're needed, and then collecting waste products to get rid of. Cool. But what exactly is blood? Good question. And Mike is going to help answer it. Mike, are you there? I'm right here, Rory. I take it you're ready to go under microscopic scrutiny again? I'm ready. Well, in case you haven't guessed by now, Rory's a rather energetic red blood cell. His main job is to carry oxygen to the other cells of the body while carrying away a waste product called carbon dioxide. This is what red blood cells look like under the microscope. They're round and look a little like a donut without the hole in the middle. The scientific name for red blood cells is erythrocytes. Another member of Rory's blood family is the white cell or leukocyte. The function of the white cells is to defend your body against infection by germs. Actually, there are many different kinds of white cells and each of them has a very specific job to do. Here's a look at one white blood cell called a lymphocyte. It's busy fighting off invaders. 
White blood cells are sometimes hard to see, so we stain them with a colored dye, just so we'll be able to find them later and tell them apart under the microscope. The other members or components of Rory's blood family are called platelets. Platelets are sticky little guys that help prevent bleeding and make your blood clot when you cut yourself. Here's a great view of them under my high-powered lens. These tiny cell fragments normally look round and smooth, but when they get busy plugging up cuts and wounds, they become kind of spiky and ragged around the edges. Now all these cells are mixed together in a slightly yellowish liquid called plasma. Plasma is mostly made up of water, but also contains protein, sugar, and salt. The whole combination literally makes up your bloodstream. So blood is really a mixture of constantly circulating red cells, white cells, platelets, and plasma. On behalf of my entire blood family, thanks, Mike. I think you have a very impressive bloodline, Rory, but where do you come from to begin with? Oh, I think I can help Rory answer that. Thanks, Tyler. Well, actually, all of the blood cells in your body are produced in your bones inside the bone marrow. Bone marrow looks like a network of tiny little connected caves, similar to a honeycomb. Now, inside the bone marrow are some very special parent cells called stem cells. A stem cell is kind of a super cell that has the power to divide itself and produce a twin. This process of cell division has kind of a fancy name. It's called mitosis. Through mitosis, the stem cell can keep on creating more and more stem cells just like itself. But what is even more amazing is that the stem cell has the power to eventually turn into all the other different blood cells as well. The stem cell can actually differentiate into red cells, white cells, and platelets. Let's suppose the stem cell gets a message to differentiate and become a red cell. Well. Inside the cell is a structure called the nucleus. Now this nucleus acts very much like a computer program. It directs the cell to produce a special protein called hemoglobin. And it's this hemoglobin that makes red cells look red and gives them the ability to attract and transport oxygen. After a period of time when the red cell is full of hemoglobin, the job of the nucleus is over and it gets kicked out. Then it has kind of a little dip in its middle on both sides. Now the red cell leaves the bone marrow to join the billions of other adult red cells circulating in the bloodstream. It will do its work for 120 days. Then it will die and be removed by an organ called the spleen. I think that's so sad. You only get to live for four months. Oh, thanks for the sympathy. But the truth of the matter is that the bone marrow produces four to five billion red cells every hour to keep replenishing those of us who wear out. Really? Four to five billion? That is entirely awesome. What I want to know is, how do you do it? Yeah, and where do you go to pick up all the oxygen our bodies need? I mean, when you're traveling around in the bloodstream with all the plasma and other stuff, you're all wet. I think of the oxygen in the air as being dry. Good question. And with Tyler's kind assistance once again, I'll be happy to show you. Take a real deep breath, Tyler. <laughs> well, what better place to get oxygen than your lungs, hmm? Each time you take a breath, pairs of oxygen atoms called O2 molecules enter your lungs and pass through smaller and smaller tubes, or bronchi, until reaching tiny air sacs called alveoli. These air sacs are covered by thin blood vessels known as capillaries. And it's here that the gas exchange takes place. The oxygen molecules pass easily into the blood vessels and bind or attach to our hemoglobin. Now loaded with this cargo of oxygen, we red cells first travel at a high rate of speed through the heart, the large aorta artery, and other big arteries just as if we were on a freeway. But then, we have to leave the freeway and travel down many narrow side streets, finally passing into even narrower and thinner capillaries. At this point, the capillaries are only one cell wide, and we have to squeeze and stretch and even fold ourselves in half to get through. Only when we get deep inside these tiny capillaries running through your muscles and tissues and organs, do we finally release our load of oxygen. But that's only half the trip. Truth is, guys, as soon as we release the oxygen, 
we pick up carbon dioxide. That's the waste material released by the cells. Carbon dioxide is also known as CO2 and consists of two atoms of oxygen and one atom of carbon. Well, at this point in the journey, because we've released our oxygen and loaded up instead with carbon dioxide, we're not as bright red as we were before. What's more, we make the long return trip back to the lungs through the veins, fighting gravity most of the way. Finally, as we complete the round trip, the carbon dioxide we've carried back is released as you breathe it out through your lungs and mouth. That is entirely awesome. Oh, right. Good job, Tyler. Woohoo! Oh. Ooh, yeah. Now, think about this. In the real world, that one complete round trip will take, on average, ready for this? It will take only 30 to 45 seconds. How about that? Actually, I think it's pretty cool. The next time I'm working up a sweat and my heart's speeding really fast, I'll think of you zipping along at top speeds just for me. Well, thank you very much, buddy. I do try very hard to keep your young muscles supplied with that extra oxygen for high performance. The harder you exercise, the faster I go. Oh, I think the stickler kits have finally arrived. You know, the platelets. Greetings, everyone. We're glad you're here for Ellie's welcome home celebration tonight. <laughs> we just finished sticking up the final decoration for her party. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? Sticking up the decoration. <laughs> <laughs> Have you talked about how important we playlists are, Rory? Yeah. Yes. yes. Did you see our photos in Rory's photo album? Sure did. Hey, guys, want to check out a great scab here on my leg? Ooh. Yeah, I picked up this little decoration yesterday when I fell off my bike. Ooh, but did I hear you say picked, my boy? Oh, oh no, 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 no. You must never pick it a scab. Never. Very bad. Very bad. Not good at all. No, I didn't say I picked it my scab. I said I picked up this little decoration when I fell off my bike yesterday. Well, that's a relief then, isn't it, Sticklers? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Let's take a look. Ooh, <gasps> isn't that a beauty? Ooh. My, my, we do good work, don't we? I think we do. I should say so. I really appreciate it, too. Thanks, guys. <laughs> One thing about the sticklers, they sure know how to give themselves a plug. <laughs> oh, Mike, are you there? Help me out here, will you? I'm here, Rory, and I'll be glad to. Of course, Nathan has every reason to thank the stickler part of the Blood family. When he took that dive off his wheels yesterday and cut his leg, it was his platelets that came to the rescue and helped stop his bleeding. That's their job. The platelets plug holes in vessel walls. Come take a closer look. Remember the super stem cell in bone marrow? When a stem cell decides to make platelets, it turns into a kind of factory cell called a megakaryocyte. This process usually takes several days. The megakaryocyte is a very large cell with several nuclei. The megakaryocyte never leaves the bone marrow, but does produce many, many fragments. These are actually the platelets, small pieces of cell material or cytoplasm. And they do leave the bone marrow and circulate freely in the bloodstream. If you had been standing inside Nathan's blood vessel yesterday, looking at the tear in his vessel's wall, you would have seen thousands, no, millions of platelets responding to his injury, literally throwing themselves over his cut. They're sticky little characters. They stick to the wound's edges and to each other to form a plug that slows the loss of blood within minutes. Okay, here's a more scientific view. Here you can see how the platelets also attract a protein found in the plasma called fibrin and use it to form a dense netting. This fibrin netting traps red blood cells and quickly becomes a clot. From the outside, you can see the scab that forms over the wound. It looks dry and crusty. But on the inside, there's a lot going on. That's because a platelet plug will last for only 24 to 72 hours as the platelets run out of energy and begin to fall apart. As long as there is still an unhealed hole in the blood vessel wall, the clot will continue being formed, dissolved, and reformed to stop and prevent more bleeding from occurring. 
When Nathan's wound is completely healed by the new cells growing over it, the clot will be cleared away and blood will begin to flow through the vessel normally again. Pardon me, Michael, but isn't it about time my side of the family makes an appearance? I was just getting ready to introduce you to our friends. Meet Granville. He's one of the extremely important white blood cells, also called a leukocyte. And to be real specific, Granville's what's called a granulocyte because he contains little granules. How do you do? Now, when Nathan cut himself, one of the things he was concerned about was that germs wouldn't get into the wound and start an infection. Well, remember the super stem cell? And do you remember how the stem cell can become a twin of either itself or differentiate into a red cell or a platelet? Well, guess what? Stem cells can also become many different kinds of white cells. White cells are an extremely important part of your immune system. They are the ones that fight infection and declare war on germs and bacteria and viruses. All those nasty microbes that can cause diseases. One kind of white cell, the granulocyte, is your body's first line of defense against invader germs. Whenever germs begin to infect your body, they send out a signal that the granulocyte recognizes. Just as soon as a granulocyte detects the germ, it begins its journey to the site of the infection. The granulocyte leaves the bloodstream and squeezes through the vessel walls, crawling through the maze of tissue, fibers, and cells in order to confront the enemy germ. Here, you can see granulocytes being attracted by bacteria. This attraction to the infection has a name. It's called chemotaxis. And once the germ is detected, there's no turning back. The granulocytes are on a mission for which they'll literally give their lives. When at last they find the invader germ, they quickly move in for the kill, first attacking the invader and then eating it. Here, using time-lapse video, you can see another granulocyte actually surrounding and engulfing a germ and eating it. Then using chemicals that are a lot like bleach, it digests the germ. Soon, nothing will remain of the germ but bits of protein. And the granulocyte? Well, this entire digestion process, which is called phagocytosis, also destroys the granulocyte. I'm proud to be part of a family that will fight for good help. But now, there's a new kind of white cell known as a monocyte that comes into action. Now, you can spot this white cell because its nucleus is the shape of a horseshoe. And monocytes are gluttons. They love to eat and eat and eat. And they're the ones who clean up the battle scene by eating the disintegrated white cell and the protein fragments of the dead germs. Pretty gross, huh? But then, they do even more. You see, when the monocyte finishes eating the dead material, it begins to examine the bits of protein to see how the germ was put together, just like a computer. Then after it analyzes the data, the monocyte calls on another type of white cell called a lymphocyte T cell or helper T cell, which has a very large nucleus in its center. Now there are many types of T cells and each one recognizes a specific type of germ. When this happens, the lymphocyte T cell engages the help of still another kind of white cell, called a lymphocyte B cell, which makes a special weapon called an antibody to use against the germ. In fact, the lymphocyte B cell turns itself into a kind of self-defense factory, producing copy after copy of these antibody weapons. After all, this is serious business. So if the invading germ does dare show up again, it'll be in for a real surprise. The antibody weapon made by the lymphocyte B cell that matches the exact design on the germ finds its mark, and the germ is stunned and wounded. Then the germ is fair game for the hungry granulocytes and monocytes to snip it out and finish it off. And that's how your body develops what's called an immunity against a disease. So once you've had a disease, say like the measles, your body's white cells, which made the antibodies to fight the measles virus, continues to protect you from ever having the measles again. 
Now, as I've said before, there are many different kinds of white blood cells, each with its own way of attacking germs. Another lymphocyte T cell, for example, sometimes referred to as a killer T cell, actually injects cytokines, or poisons, into the enemy germ. Here in this excellent time-lapse microscopic video, you can actually see a lymphocyte killer T cell attacking and killing a virus-infected cell. Pretty cool, huh? Personally, I think the study of hematology and immunology are fascinating sciences. I love looking through my microscope, seeing what these tiny cells look like up close. But I think I hear music, and that means Ellie's celebration has begun. So let's go see who's at the party. Well, this is an exciting moment, huh? After her automobile accident, Ellie looks simply terrific. You'd never know she had to have a blood transfusion when she was in the hospital. Did you know she needed 30 pints? 30 pints? <gasps> That's 30 bags. Hey, who's that man she's greeting now? Oh, that's George Horner. He saw the accident happen and was so concerned about Ellie, he decided to become a blood donor. What a caring man. He gave blood and also made a platelet donation. I am so impressed. So am I. Oh, and there's Randy from the delivery service. He carries blood from the blood center's laboratory to the hospitals. He's a very careful driver. I've ridden with him many times. He wears his seatbelt, too. And speaking of the Blood Center's laboratory, there's Helen Delaney and Shirley and Bill. They process and test each and every bag of blood that's donated, making sure it's safe to give to the patients who need a transfusion. Yes, indeed. Patients like Tiffany. Tiffany needs frequent transfusions because her red blood cells are sickle-shaped instead of round. She gets real tired, but after she gets a transfusion, she feels pretty energetic again. Ah, oh, do you see Chris talking to Seth? Two more great kids who faced life-threatening diseases and needed blood from kind-hearted donors. Seth battled cancer, didn't he? That is true. A very brave boy. Oh, and didn't Chris have a heart transplant? And look who's cutting a piece of cake for herself. Kendra! I remember when she needed blood. I believe she walked through a plate glass window. Oh, my, no! Oh, my, yes. Look over there. It's little Savannah. Volunteer blood donors came through for her, too, when she needed a bone marrow transplant. How healthy she looks now. I'm just so happy everyone is here to celebrate Ellie's recovery. What a great party. Oh, it definitely is. And it looks like Ellie's having a wonderful time. Say, are you 17 yet? Uh -huh, I am. I just turned 17 three months ago and celebrated by giving my first donation at the blood drive at school. Did you? Me too. Well, you know, you can give blood every 56 days. And I was thinking, if you're not doing anything tomorrow after the track meet, how would you like to come along with me and a couple of friends, go down to the blood center to donate blood again? I think we're going to go see a movie afterwards. Oh, that's a terrific idea. You know, it really is great seeing Ellie back up on her feet again. But you're right, there's always going to be someone who's going to need blood real bad, just like she did after her car accident. I wish more people knew just how important donating blood really is. Oh, it definitely helps save lives. No kidding. Hey, and did you know someone needs a blood transfusion every three seconds? Hey guys, I think something really important is happening down there with Alice and Jerome. I do believe you're right. Do you realize that for every hundred people who could give blood, only five people actually do? Only five in a hundred? No. Now I'm just flat sure there are a lot of healthy people out there who care about helping others. I'm sure there are too. Take Leah. Isn't that Leah? Why, it is. It is! Howdy, Leah! Do you know she's 78 years old now? And do you know she's given more than 110 pints of blood? What a lady! Makes me feel warm all over. She is one grand lady. She understands that only people can give blood to other people. It's the gift of life. Shh, shh, the pipe down now. I think Ellie's going to say something. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to my party. Thanks to all of you for helping me and so many other people by volunteering to donate blood. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Rita. You too, Leah. Hi. 
Thanks, Terry and Dave and Officer Tuggle and just everyone. Thanks for being so generous. Thanks for sharing. I say, Rory, do you think it'd be okay if we got some cookies and juice now? Good idea, Granville. Let's join the celebration. Goodbye, and thanks for staying healthy. And for being a person who cares about other people. Oh, and when you go home tonight, remember to tell your family and friends how important it is to become a volunteer blood donor. It saves lives. You can say that again. It saves lives. Come on, guys. <laughs> I'm going for the cookies and juice. Me too. <laughs> oh, if you want to learn more about us, be sure to look us up on our personal website. Our address is www.myblood.yourblood.org. <laughs>